Hello, hi everyone. In this video, I would like to show you how to create an action in Integration Hub. Okay, before we have done one video about how to do the integration between LinkedIn and ServiceNow, and another one which is like once I have done the integration, I'm sending a REST message which is actually bringing back my profile information and then I'm passing that information and pushing that information as well to, to a specific table, to the LinkedIn user table, where I have my first name, last name, and profile ID, something like this, okay? The second video is all about writing the script, which is going to call the REST message and then parse it and then send the message to the table, uh, the data to the table. But this one is going to be just creating one action, which will have few steps, uh, one, two, three, and uh, we will not, it won't be writing that much of script, only only once but the rest of the time we're going to do a lot of configuration and we're going to achieve the same result so that's what we are going to do in this video the first thing make sure that you have integration hub installed in your instance if you do not have all you need to do is to go to your instance click on the action activate plugin look for the uh, uh, integration hub plugin activate it and then you have uh, installed here right here you will have this section and now the first thing what you have to do is to create connection and credential aliases. So I'm already in this page. I'm gonna click on new and create one. Okay, so I'm gonna give a name info. Let me give like this LinkedIn info underscore alias. This is highly important to put the underscore, otherwise it won't work it won't accept anything without underscore that's something very specific when you're creating a connection that's what i found out here now there is this thing like the type that you have to choose we have credential and connection make sure that you choose connection and credential and connection type is going to be http okay we have others but this one is going to be http and the default to try policy it's going to be this one and leave it as it is click on submit okay I'm going to click again on the uh, connection credential and I'm going to add a connection. So this is where I'm going to put the URL. So if you remember, if you have a kind of vision how to, uh, how, when you create your REST message, you actually put the endpoint URL, okay? That's information that we are going to put here, but not entirely the, um, the URL, but only some part of the URL, which is going to be the base part of the URL. Okay, I'm going to show you the URL that I have already. This is the one that I have. This is the one that I am, was sending the rest message, which was bringing back, the, bringing back the data. But in here, I'm gonna just select the first part, which is called, which is the base, okay? So I'm gonna just copy that one, put it here, okay? Perfect. In here, I'm gonna give a name, it's going to be called, let's say, LinkedIn. Hmm info okay i'm not that much creative i'm going to no let's put linkedin connection okay i'm gonna submit and click on that again click on linkedin connection again make sure that you have the uh, proper url and you have the connection alias here and here the credential part this is uh, highly important if you remember when you were there is another video, there is another video where I'm showing how to do the OAuth configuration and between ServiceNow and LinkedIn. So because we were, that one was created in order to ask for a token. That's the thing that we are going to do here. We are not going to redo the configuration, it's already done, but we are going to do some steps and then ask for a token. So I'm gonna click on the search and click on create new and look for or to credential okay so I'm gonna just give a name here LinkedIn um, info token okay as I have I already created I already done the configuration I just need to choose the OAuth entity profile. So you have to remember in this step, there was one step where there is a default OAuth entity profile created. So can I can access from here. So I'm gonna just, uh, okay, let's look at it like this. Okay, I have LinkedIn call default profile. I'm gonna choose that one, submit. Okay, 
apparently is done so I'm gonna just close this one but not yet so I'm gonna just update I'm going once more I don't have it I'm going here on credential and I have it here let me go once more here here and then here and look for the one we have created this one update okay you have to make sure this is properly done and specifically the URL we should we should not have any sort of space otherwise it will of course some trouble when we are going to create our steps okay so now is the time to actually ask for a token so as you can see here OAuth access or refresh token are not available so I'm gonna click on get OAuth token in order to get one so I'm gonna click on that so I'm gonna click on sign in I have a OAuth access token it's available now great so we have done the first part of the configuration now we can start to do work on the flow designer start to create our first action and in the, our first action there will be three steps that everything that is done by the script we are going to do with some clicks okay with some configuration so here this is the application linkedin that i've created uh, and you have uh, on the flow, flow designer you have the connection and credential aliases that we have created right now and we are going to create an action and we have to find that under flow designer action click on create okay so in here just I'm going to give a title get profile LinkedIn profile info okay and here I'm going to choose the LinkedIn application that I have created so I'm going to submit great so this is our flow designer and in between inputs and outputs we are going to create three steps and first step is the rest message second step is the parsing step and the third step is creating the record where we are going to put our data input and output will be useful uh, for us in order to manipulate send the data in in between steps okay by putting in some variables but in here in our endpoint URL we don't have any sort of variable that you have to insert so I don't actually need to create in the beginning so I'm going to directly create the step which is the rest one so I'm going to uh, under integration look for rest perform a rest web service request so I'm going to click on that and here let me give a good title get info okay this is my title here connection make sure that you have used connection alias okay because we have one created and this is the one if you once you select that you will have automatically the base URL that we have mentioned when we are creating that okay in the connection this is where we have, we have to put the remaining part of the URL that's the resource part so I'm gonna just click here get the remaining thing and put it here okay and make sure that I don't have any sort of okay I don't have any missing information I'm gonna save this one okay now is to is the time to test if this is going to work or not so I I should get some information and this should be my personal information like first name last name and so on so I'm gonna click on test run test action has been executed to view the action click here so I'm gonna view the action so I have the action statistic and in here I have the action the name of the, the title no inputs no logs and I have the step and it seems be seems to be completed and I have all the information which is quite interesting like credential connection and HTTP method get so we have everything here so you can and right here step output data and you can look for response body 
and I have my response body. If I click on that, I can see this is the JSON um, response. So I have my personal information here, so like first name, last name, and so on. So the first step is successful. I, we, we, we have done. Now we have to do our second step, which is um, writing a script, which is going to parse it. So I'm going to click on script and um, give a title first response body LinkedIn okay it's not okay I'm gonna give this this kind of title now uh, what I'm going to do is create a variable so I'm gonna click on create variable the first variable is going to be uh, the response body okay and the second variable is going to be the status code why I need the status code because I'm going to put um, uh, I'm going to put some sort of code, some sort of if condition, which if the if, if the status code is 200, do this thing. So I'm going to put this condition in the beginning, and inside that uh, curly bracket, I'm going to like parse, put the code which is build responsible to parse, and then the code which will send the data in our output variable. So here I'm going to mention response body, and then take what we have received. If you remember in my result I have output response body I'm taking that putting here and I'm so I will be able to use this variable I'm going to do the same thing it's to uh, sorry for the status code to have 200 because we have it somewhere we should have it somewhere here uh, we don't have it that's something okay so oh, we have it here status code now what we are going to do is to write the first condition if inputs dot status underscore code equal equal to I'm verifying a condition it should be 200 which means it's successful Do everything that you have inside the curly brackets the first thing what we are going to, what you are going to do is to you are going to parse okay so I'm gonna create a variable which is called response body where I will put in everything that I'm going to parse so I'm going to use JSON dot parse parse everything that you have in the response body which is input inputs and not status code but status oh, response response body okay boom now is the time to create our output variables where we can put the data that we have so we we have our string we have our json string and we're gonna we have parsed it we have it in our response body but we can make it like take the uh, so if i look at here i want specifically this variable this variable and this this uh, this object will which has my first name and last name should be used in here and also sent to my output variable so i'm going to create three output variable the first one is going to be first name the second one is going to be last name the third one is going to be my id okay i'm going to use it here so the first one is outputs dot um, first name equal to it's not really equal where we're going to send the data in, the, in this direction 
um, response body dot localized so I'm having the data from the string from the response body okay response uh, first name and the second one I'm gonna use the same thing outputs I'm using localized first name because I have localized first name here okay just make sure localized first name ID and localized last name that is what I'm going what I'm using here and output last name same thing response body not first name this is automatically done and I'm gonna put output ID which is going to be a response body dot ID up okay so it's pretty much done our script is ready it's as you can see we haven't wrote that much of script okay we could even take it off the if condition but I want to have it and uh, all we have done created our variable input and output that's another step and a bit of script okay so this is I'm gonna save it and we are not going to write any more the script if you remember the other one we have written first the uh, this the line which is invoking the rest message and then parsing it and then writing something similar to that and also uh, creating the record in our in the table that I want so creating a glide record object and then putting what we get from the response in the specified field like first name last name and so on here we are just doing this part and as a third part we will be putting the result and it's going to be very quick and no more code so just um, so we're going to test this one is going to work or not I'm going to click on test run test okay so let me close this one and go to the step I should I having I'm having the second step parse response body and as you can see here I have first name ID and last name and I have my first name Karthik and then so on the ID and my last name so I'm having the result I'm getting the result I parse from the response body I'm getting the result into this variable now I am able to use this variable now so this will me make me easier to do the third action which is create record I'm going to select the table that I want LinkedIn user choose the field that I want first name last name profile ID and then select the appropriate output variable so the first name last name and the ID my second action is done create record in LinkedIn user table okay so I'm gonna save this one okay perfect so now let me show you before I test this one I make sure that I have nothing in my table okay I have nothing right so now I'm gonna run the test and see if it is going to create a record with my first name last name and the profile ID that's our objective and we have only written one part only one script and it's in the parts only on the second step the rest is just configuration so I'm gonna click on test run test okay I don't know why I clicked another time hope he didn't create it probably created it twice so I'm gonna check now what we have as you can see as I click it twice it created twice I don't have any business rule so it's not making like if I have duplicate data or so on so it's created to record as you can see so I have all the information my first name last name and so on so this is how we can work with 
flow designer we have done exactly the same thing but with a lot of different configuration and personally i prefer this one because we have some kind of logic here like the first step second step third step and if you are if you are interested to write more script it's you can use the you can like you can choose like a step for the script but this is much more clear for me than the other one which is like playing on different ways so it's up to a person so so that's how we can work with the flow designer thank you for watching watching hope you like it bye